let's say you were in a situation where you were dealing with a narcissist, someone with narcissistic personality disorder or just narcissistic traits, or, you know, they were emotionally abusive in some way. And maybe in that relationship, all of your focus is on that person, right? All of your mental energy, your emotional energy, everything is expounded on to this person when you're in that type of a situation. And then you get out of it. And then you go down the rabbit hole of narcissism and you're looking up everything like, what's a narcissist? What is this? Like, look at their behaviors, the narcissist, the narcissist, the narcissist, the narcissist. And it's like, you went from one obsession to the other. Like it's still all about them and it's never about you because it wasn't about you in the relationship. And now the relationship is over. It's still all about them. And so that's where I'm kind of like, okay, like, yes, it's helpful to identify some behaviors, acknowledge, you know, your experience or what you went through. But okay, once we've identified, okay, what this was, now what? Now you have to take a look in yourself and cope. And it kind of goes back to what was I drawn to about this person beginning? What red flags did I, did I miss? Did I ignore? Did I tolerate? What was it about me that was, that was drawn to this? And how can I not, how can I avoid going down that same road again with someone else? But I have to look at myself. Right? I have to do the healing work. Now I got to heal from the wounds of this relationship and look at the impact of how did this change the view of myself and the world around me. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So it it's still requiring you to take a deeper inner look with yourself. But when we are so caught up in well, I think my ex was a narcissist and we're we're on YouTube, we're on TikTok, we're looking at everything. Narcissist, 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 narcissist. Like we we feed that obsession, right? But it's still about them. Mm. So that's that's my take. Is you know, I like to challenge, I like to say, okay, well, hold on, wait a minute. What are we doing? How is this helping us? So <laughs> no that's good i i love it because and the reason i asked you that was again it's a buzzword but there's so i mean you have 12 year old kids talking about my ex was a narcissist they're like 12 13 talking <laughs> just like at 13 he was gaslighting me i'm like <laughs> yeah 13 no shade to to the, to the kids but you know yeah. 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 It gets heavy. It gets heavy. It looks like, hold on, wait a minute. We don't have to <laughs> get clear on the language sometimes. It's 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 a lot, but I'm glad you cleared the air because uh I want to get some clarity on that to help my folks out. Mm -hmm. I was looking at one of your reels, as usual. And you talked about the grief process that comes with the ending of a traumatic or a toxic relationship. Why is it so many people don't take time to grieve? Now, that's a word we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we really don't talk about that a lot. And, you know, it's, it's it's hard, right? Like the feeling of loss or abandonment that we might have after relationship, even if it was unhealthy or traumatic or toxic, when we avoid that grief process, we'll jump into the next thing. And then we might even go back to that person. We'll go from relationship to relationship to avoid that pain. And, you know, and nobody likes to feel that. Nobody wants to grieve. Nobody wants to, you know, be upset about it. But what I've also found too, like, if the relationship has been traumatic and there's been layers of betrayal, there's been layers of, you know, infidelity or abuse in that relationship, there's a lot of judgment um, that comes from society, from even just our own internal voice. Um, 
that comes with some shame of, wow, like I'm upset that this is over. I'm sad that this is over, even though this was not, not healthy. And there, there's this internal shame that can exist when we have these complicated feelings about something that was unhealthy for us. But I want to be able to validate that experience because, you know, people don't come, you know, all bad. You know, they don't come with, hey, look, I'm the villain, you know, on their forehead, right? Like people are very complex. And, you know, the person that maybe was doing the betraying is probably filled with a lot of gray. There was probably layers of nurturing that relationship moments when they showed up moments when they you know showed love and compassion that those were those moments that you clinged on to not necessarily the ones where they were doing the hurt right and so when we allow ourselves to be able to give ourselves some grace to to grieve right grace to grieve something that even if it was unhealthy and so because that's something for us. That's something for us to give to ourselves, right? To not neglect ourselves in that way and say, yeah, no, I need to feel these feelings. I need to work through this process. I need to understand what this was and how I can move forward so I can have better. So I can believe I can have better. And so, you know, being able to not necessarily avoid that pain and the shame that comes with that and being able to allow ourselves the space, the grace to grieve and the compassion and the nurture that we didn't maybe get in that relationship or childhood or whatever the case is and shut out all the outside noise of what your friends might think or how we, our friends or family might think we should feel, right? Because our friends and family be like, well, you know, that wasn't good for you anyway, why are you upset? Like they did you so dirty, um, you should be jumping for joy right now. And Lima was sitting there like, I'm I'm actually hurt. Like I'm actually not okay, right? But those messages, even though they're maybe they don't intend to cause harm or whatever, but it does leave some feelings of shame if we're like, oh dang, should I be upset? This is over. Should I be, should I be crying in the middle of the night? Should I be thinking about this person? And after they did me dirty, after they treated me so poorly, but it's like, it wasn't just, it wasn't all that, right? Like it was all bad. We probably wouldn't be there that long. You know what I mean? It was, there's some nuance, there's some layers, there's some gray. And so when we were able to acknowledge that and lean into that and say, yeah, you know what? I have a right to grieve. I have a right to feel through my feelings and work through it and give myself that so I can heal. And so I can have better relationships mm -hmm. i like what you said you said the grace to grieve mm -hmm. that's good i like that that's 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 a tweet i'll give you uh the credit for it <laughs> <laughs> that's good because we again we we throw around the word narcissism around a lot but we don't use words like grieve and you know things of that nature because um understanding loss there's a book i'm listening to on audible now called uh it's called necessary endings by dr henry cloud mm. really good and he's talking about how in order for something to grow something has to die first and very few of us know how to make that transition of because a lot of times what i was trying to pull things with us, take everything with us, but we we rarely unpack things. We're always packing, but never unpack. Mm -hmm. uh, and eventually it gets too heavy for us. And that's when we realize that we have to let something go. But mm -hmm. it's so much stuff that we've taken with us, we don't know what to unpack. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's a really good book, though. Really good book. I want to have a bonus round with you now. This is something that I ask all of our guests on the show. So there's no right or wrong answer. I just like to know your thought process on these. Number one, what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. The biggest mistake I see women make in relationships. <sighs> I would probably say 
Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.